Hey friends, welcome to our daily devotion today. Have you ever made a, a choice that was not the best choice? Ever made an agreement that wasn't the best agreement? I heard a story of two young boys who were uh, at the home. They were bored one morning and following breakfast, they were supposed to be cleaning up the table and the mom had left the eggs out for them to clean out. Well, the older brother got an idea. He told his younger brother, he said, hey, I'll give you a dollar if you let me crack three eggs on top of your head. The little brother thought for a second, a dollar? Well, the older brother reached in his pocket and showed him a crisp dollar bill and said, I'll give you this dollar if you let me crack three eggs on your head. The little brother said, okay. Well, the older brother got his first egg and cracked it on his head and the egg just was gooey and running down the side of his face. Then the older brother got the second egg and cracked this on his head and it was running down his other side of the face. Well, the little boy closed his eyes and just waited for that third egg. But it didn't come, and it didn't come. So he opened his eyes and said, where's the third egg? And the, little, the older brother took the dollar and put it back in his pocket and said, that egg would have cost me a dollar to crack on your head. I'm just going to do two. You know, sometimes we don't think things through all the way. Sometimes we don't see the big picture. Well, when it comes to God, when it comes to one and only God, we have to see the big picture. We got to realize that there are idols in our life and we have to choose God and not them. See, as we continue this study of idolatry today, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Joshua. And I want you to turn to the 24th chapter. And here in the 24th chapter, Joshua has gathered around the people of Israel. He's giving some parting instructions as he's about to pass. He's 110 years old at this point. And just as Moses did, Joshua is now trying to encourage the people of Israel to reignite the passion and their love and, and, and to reignite the covenant they have with God. And so we find these words of Joshua in chapter 24, verses 15 and 14 and 15. And if you look at those with me, it says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods or idols your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua comes and says, today you need to make a decision. Today you need to make a commitment. Today you need to make a choice, an important choice. You need to decide if you go worship false gods and false idols, even things that your ancestors worship, or if you're going to worship the one living God. See, that is a choice you and I need to make every day. See, we talked over the last couple days about how objects or people, and even yesterday we talked about how emotions or feelings or even our hatred can become idols in our lives. Because anything that sits on the throne of our hearts and minds where God is supposed to be can be an idol. And so for two days we prayed for conviction of those idols. Well, now that God has led us to a point of realizing there are idols, we got to do something about it. We got to make a choice. Now, when it comes to making a choice, Jesus gives us some pretty extreme examples of what that looks like. In the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, when he's talking about the sin of adultery, hear what he says about the sin of adultery in Matthew chapter 5, verses 29. It says, If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right eye causes, excuse me, your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of the body than for your whole body to go into hell. Listen, whether it's sin, whether it's adultery, whatever it is, God makes it clear whatever is causing you not to follow God, not to seek Him out, you must remove it. Now, Christ is not saying you need to self harm here, absolutely not. But he's using the hyperboles, exaggeration, to let you know, guess what? You need to take steps. You need to do things to remove the things that detract you from your purpose of following me. So as we said, there are things that we can put in areas that God should sit on, on our hearts and thrones. These things, idols and false gods. 
We've asked God to convict us. Now let me ask you, are you willing to do something about it? I challenge you today to continue to pray for conviction over things that are false, over things that are idols in your life. But let's be willing to do something about it. Let's not just be hearers of the word, but let's be doers. Ask God today. Say, God, help me remove this idol. Help me remove this prejudice. God, I know I need to end this relationship. God, I know I need to maybe give up this job or give up this idol. Today, let's make that decision. Make that choice to choose God because that's the wise decision. And then maybe we can be like Joshua and we can say the same thing he said at last part of verse 15. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this opportunity to be reminded, God, that you convict us of these false idols. You convict us of these false gods, these things that are standing in the place of your rightful position of our hearts and minds. But God, you also have told us today that we need to do something about it. Just as you taught on the Sermon on the Mount, God, if we're sinning, then we need to remove it. God, if there's a false idol or there's a God in our life that's not you, we need to remove it. So God, help us. Help us to know the way in which you desire for us to live. Help us surrender to it and help us choose you. Help us choose you. The only right decision there is. God, we love you. We praise you. We ask for your conviction. But now, God, we ask for your strength to do what we know we need to do to put you as our one and only God in our lives. We love you. We praise you. and We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.